We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. But for now, I send my thanks and warmest good wishes to you all. Hi, kindly subscribe to Christocentric message for me and you will be blessed. But he has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. And I and his whole family and this and many other countries owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim or we shall ever know. Although it's a time of great happiness and good cheer for many, Christmas can be hard for those who have lost loved ones. This year especially I understand why. But for me, in the months since the death of my beloved Philip, I have drawn great comfort from the warmth and affection of the many tributes to his life and work, from around the country, the Commonwealth and the world. His sense of service, intellectual curiosity and capacity to squeeze fun out of any situation were all irrepressible. That mischievous, inquiring twinkle was as bright at the end as when I first set eyes on him. But life, of course, consists of final partings as well as first meetings. And as much as I and my family miss him, I know he would want us to enjoy Christmas. We felt his presence as we, like millions around the world, readied ourselves for Christmas. While COVID again means we can't celebrate quite as we may have wished, we can still enjoy the many happy traditions. Be it the singing of carols, as long as the tune is well known, decorating the tree, giving and receiving presents, or watching a favorite film where we already know the ending. It's no surprise that families so often treasure their Christmas routines. We see our own children and their families embrace the roles, traditions and values that mean so much to us, as these are passed from one generation to the next, sometimes being updated for changing times. I see it in my own family, and it is a source of great happiness. Prince Philip was always mindful of this sense of passing the baton. That's why he created the Duke of Edinburgh's award, which offers young people throughout the Commonwealth and beyond the chance of exploration and adventure. It remains an astonishing success, grounded in his faith in the future. He was also an early champion of taking seriously our stewardship of the environment. And I am proud beyond words that his pioneering work has been taken on and magnified by our eldest son, Charles, and his eldest son, William, admirably supported by Camilla and Catherine, most recently at the COP Climate Change Summit in Glasgow. Next summer, we look forward to the Commonwealth Games. The Baton is currently traveling the length and breadth of the Commonwealth, heading towards Birmingham, a beacon of hope on its journey. It will be a chance to celebrate the achievements of athletes and the coming together of like-minded nations. And February, just six weeks from now, will see the start of my Platinum Jubilee year which I hope will be an opportunity for people everywhere to enjoy a sense of togetherness, a chance to give thanks for the enormous changes of the last 70 years, social, scientific and cultural, and also to look ahead with confidence. I'm sure someone somewhere today will remark that Christmas is a time for children. It's an engaging truth, but only half the story. Perhaps it's truer to say that Christmas can speak to the child within us all. Adults, when weighed down with worries, sometimes fail to see the joy in simple things where children do not. And for me and my family, 
even with one familiar laugh missing this year, there will be joy in Christmas as we have the chance to reminisce and see anew the wonder of the festive season through the eyes of our young children, of whom we were delighted to welcome four more this year. They teach us all a lesson, just as the Christmas story does, that in the birth of a child there is a new dawn with endless potential. It is this simplicity of the Christmas story that makes it so universally appealing. Simple happenings that form the starting point of the life of Jesus, a man whose teachings have been handed down from generation to generation and have been the bedrock of my faith. His birth marked a new beginning. As the carol says, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. I wish you all a very happy Christmas. I'm speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time, a time of disruption in the life of our country, a disruption that has brought grief to some, financial difficulties to many, and enormous changes to the daily lives of us all. I want to thank everyone on the NHS frontline, as well as care workers and those carrying out essential roles who selflessly continue their day-to-day -day duties outside the home in support of us all. I'm sure the nation will join me in assuring you that what you do is appreciated and every hour of your hard work brings us closer to a return to more normal times. I also want to thank those of you who are staying at home, thereby helping to protect the vulnerable and sparing many families the pain already felt by those who have lost loved ones. Together we are tackling this disease, and I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it. I hope in the years to come, everyone will be able to take pride in how they responded to this challenge. And those who come after us will say the Britons of this generation were as strong as any, that the attributes of self-discipline, of quiet, good-humoured resolve, and of fellow feeling still characterise this country. The pride in who we are is not a part of our past. It defines our present and our future. The moments when the United Kingdom has come together to applaud its care and essential workers will be remembered as an expression of our national spirit. And its symbol will be the rainbows drawn by children. Across the Commonwealth and around the world, we have seen heartwarming stories of people coming together to help others, be it through delivering food parcels and medicines, checking on neighbours, or converting businesses to help the relief effort. And though self-isolating may at times be hard, many people of all faiths and of none are discovering that it presents an opportunity to slow down, pause and reflect in prayer or meditation. It reminds me of the very first broadcast I made in 1940, helped by my sister. We as children spoke from here at Windsor to children who had been evacuated from their homes and sent away for their own safety. Today, once again, many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones. But now as then, we know deep down that it is the right thing to do. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavour, using the great advances of science and our instinctive compassion to heal. We will succeed, and that success will belong to every one of us. 
we should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. But for now, I send my thanks and warmest good wishes. My to lords you. and members of the House of Commons, my husband and I look forward eagerly to the series of visits we shall make next year in the Commonwealth, where we shall renew and extend the friendships which we value so very highly. In the early part of the year, we shall visit India and Pakistan on the invitation of the presidents of those countries. And I welcome especially this opportunity of seeing for the first time something of these two great nations of the Commonwealth. My government will play their full part in maintaining the North Atlantic Alliance and the other regional pacts to which they belong. My armed forces will continue to make their contribution to the safeguarding of world peace. The friendship which links us to our great ally, the United States of America, is a powerful element in the defense of peace. Throughout the coming session, my government will continue to give resolute support to the work of the United Nations. The improvement of relations between East and West remains a primary object of their policy. In particular, they will go on working for the success of the Geneva Conference on the discontinuance of nuclear weapons tests and will do their utmost to achieve comprehensive disarmament under effective international control. They will continue to cooperate with our partners in consolidating the European Free Trade Association. At the same time, they will work towards the political and economic unity of Western Europe on a basis satisfactory to all the governments concerned. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your councils. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, my government's priority is to deliver a national recovery from the pandemic that makes the United Kingdom stronger, healthier and more prosperous than before. To achieve this, my government will level up opportunities across all parts of the United Kingdom, supporting jobs, businesses and economic growth, and addressing the impact of the pandemic on public services. My government will protect the health of the nation, continuing the vaccination programme and providing additional funding to support the NHS. My ministers will bring forward legislation to empower the NHS to innovate and embrace technology. Patients will receive more tailored and preventative care closer to home. Measures will be brought forward to support the health and well-being of the nation, including to tackle obesity and improve mental health. Proposals on social care reform will be brought forward. My government will build on the success of the vaccination program to lead the world in life sciences, pioneering new treatments against diseases like cancer, and securing jobs and investment across the country. My ministers will oversee the fastest ever increase in public funding for research and development, and pass legislation to establish I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.